Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Wogan. I'm the founder of the Clear Scoliosis Institute. Today I want to talk to you about the three-dimensional analysis of the vertebral subluxation. We want to look at it as the radio radiographic manifestation of the upper cervical subluxation complex. In specific upper cervical work, what we normally see is measurements in regard to the upper angle and the lower angle. Now, this was first discovered by Dr. Worksing in the 1930s. B.J. Palmer embraced it. It was followed by Grostick, Nuka, um, Dr. Roy Sweat, also orthospinology, uh, Pettibon, chiropractic biophysics. All the upper cervicals have been utilizing this type of analysis. So we see there's a left upper angle two degrees, left lower angle, or up, left upper angle six degrees, left lower angle two degrees. Most commonly then we also measure the rotation. Here we've got anti-rotational left six degrees. Now this gives us a pretty good idea of the radiographic manifestation of the vertebral subluxation complex. Normally the lateral cervical x-ray is just looking at the atlas and how it sits pretty much so we can take x-rays in that dimension. But I really think there's more to it when we look at it three-dimensionally. What we're going to do is take a look at the lateral cervical x-ray and at this time I'm not even going to address the forward head posture or the loss of cervical kyphosis. What I want to do is look at the subluxation in regard to the occiput, the atlas, and the axis. Those three areas specifically. Now, when we go ahead and look at the way the occiput sits in relationship to the axis, this is a superior stress line. We look at this on the right side here, what we should see is a 72 degree angle. And we can measure that. And this one actually measures 47 degrees. So what that means is there's a 25 degree radiographic manifestation of the verbal subluxation on in this dimension here. The next thing I want to do is look at the atlas in relationship to C2. And here when we measure it, we can see that it actually measures 70 degrees, and 72 degrees is normal in this position as well. So we've got a 2 degree subluxation in this dimension relative to the atlas in relationship to C2. When we look at C2, and we're going to relate this to a horizontal plane line, the vertebral body's baseline of C2 should be at a minus 10 degrees. In other words, it should be going down. We can see this one is considerably superior. This one measures at a plus 23 degrees. Now, minus 10 degrees is normal. So, we've got a measurable subluxation here of 33 degrees. Now, let's go back and kind of add all these together and see what's really going on in regard to the vertebral subluxation. We've got an upper angle of 2 degrees, or 6 degrees. Lower angle 2 degrees, which gives us a total of 8 degrees. These are both on the same side. Then we've got 6 degrees of rotation, so going with the upper and lower angle of 8 degrees plus 6 is a total of 14 degrees of subluxation in the upper cervical spine. Now this is where it gets interesting. If we go ahead and add the misalignment subluxation of the occiput, which is 25 degrees, the atlas, which is 2 degrees, and then C2, which is 33 degrees, as we add those together, we see that we've got an upper angle of 6 degrees, a lower angle of 2 degrees, a 6 degrees anti-rotation on the base posterior x-ray, 25 degrees subluxation of the occiput, 2 degrees subluxation of the atlas, 33 degrees subluxation of the axis. When we add all these up together, we get 74 degrees of total subluxation relative to the atlas, occiput, and the axis in all three dimensions. Once we can able to quantify this, then we can turn around and figure out how to correct this back to normal. For further information, please contact the Clear School, it's clearinstitute.org um, to be able to understand how to become the spinal experts in the chiropractic profession. Thank you.